primogeniture English, is the right, by law or custom, of the firstborn legitimate son to inherit his parents' entire or main estate, in preference to shared inheritance among all or some children, a child other than the eldest male, a daughter, illegitimate child or a collateral relative. In some cases the estate may instead be the inheritance of the firstborn child or occasionally the firstborn daughter. The descendant often the son of a deceased elder sibling typically elder brother inherits before a living younger sibling by right of substitution for the deceased heir. In the absence of any children, brothers succeed, individually, to the inheritance by seniority of age subject to substitution. Among siblings, sons usually inherit before daughters. In the absence of male descendants in the male line, there are variations of primogeniture which allocate the inheritance to a daughter or a brother or, in the absence of either, to another collateral relative, in a specified order e.g. male preference primogeniture, salic primogeniture, semi-salic primogeniture. The principle has applied in history to inheritance of real property land as well as inherited titles and offices, most notably monarchies, continuing until modified or abolished. Variations on primogeniture modify the right of the first-born son to the entirety of a family's inheritance or, in the West since World War II, eliminate the preference for males over females absolute primogeniture. Most monarchies in Western Europe have eliminated male preference in succession, Belgium, Denmark, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden and the United Kingdom. Primogeniture has not been the only form of inheritance in monarchies. The Holy Roman Emperor was selected for enthronement by a small number of powerful prince electors from among Europe's Christian males of inherited nobility. Currently, succession to the Saudi Arabian throne uses a form of lateral agnatic seniority, as did the Kievan Rus see Rota system, the early Kingdom of Scotland see Tanistry, the Mongol Empire see lateral succession, or the later Ottoman Empire see succession practices. Order of succession in monarchies today <inaudible> Absolute primogeniture Absolute, equal, or lineal primogeniture is a form of primogeniture in which gender is irrelevant for inheritance. No modern monarchy before 1980 practiced this form of primogeniture, however, according to Pomeride 1972, the Basques of the Kingdom of Navarre transmitted title and property to the firstborn regardless of sex. The higher nobility and free families of the early and high Middle Ages followed this custom. The Navarrese monarchy, however, was inherited by dynasties from outside of Navarre, which followed different successional laws, usually male preference primogeniture. Eventually only the Basque lower nobility and free families of the Basque country and other regions continued to follow this custom, which persisted as late as the 19th century, an ancient and alternative way in which women succeeded to power, especially without displacing the direct male line descendants of the first monarchs, is the historical consortium or co-regency between husband, and wife or other relatives. The most notable of these are the Egyptian cases of Hatshepsut and Thutmose III, and the monarchs of the Ptolemaic dynasty. In 1980, Sweden amended its constitution to adopt royal succession by absolute primogeniture, displacing King Carl XVI Gustaf's infant son, Prince Carl Philip, in favour of his elder daughter, Princess Victoria, in the process. Several monarchies have since followed suit, the Netherlands in 1983, Norway in 1990, Belgium in 1991, Denmark in 2009, Luxembourg in 2011, and the United Kingdom and the other Commonwealth realms for people born after October 2011 in 2015. Monaco, the Netherlands, and Norway also deviated from traditional primogeniture in the late 20th or early 21st century by restricting succession to the crown to relatives within a specified degree of kinship to the most recent monarch. Recently, other monarchies have changed or considered changing to absolute primogeniture. With the birth of Infanta Leonor of Spain on 31 October 2005 to the then heir apparent Felipe, Prince of Asturias and Princess Letizia, the Spanish Prime Minister José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero reaffirmed the intention of the government to institute, by amendment of the Spanish Constitution, absolute primogeniture. Zapatero's proposal was supported by the leader of the main opposition party, the conservative Partido Popular, making its passage probable. However, Zapatero's administration ended before an amendment was drafted, and the succeeding government has not pursued it. 
the Prince counseled reformers that there was plenty of time before any constitutional amendment would need to be enacted because the expectation was to leave him next in line to succeed his father despite his elder sister's continued status as dynasts. Equal primogeniture was expected to apply first to his children. Felipe succeeded to the throne as Felipe VI upon his father's abdication in 2014, by which time he had two daughters. Felipe VI has no son that would, absent the constitutional amendment, displace Leonor as heir apparent. In July 2006, the Nepalese government proposed adopting absolute primogeniture, but the monarchy was abolished in 2008 before the change could be effected. In 2011, the governments of the 16 Commonwealth realms which have a common monarch announced the Perth Agreement, a plan to legislate changes to absolute primogeniture. This was implemented when the necessary legislation came into effect on 26 March 2015. In Japan, it has been debated whether or not to adopt absolute primogeniture, as Princess Aiko is the only child of Emperor Naruhito. However, the birth in 2006 of Prince Hisahito, a son of Prince Akashino the younger brother of Naruhito, and next in line to the chrysanthemum throne has suspended the debate. <laughs> Agnatic primogeniture Under agnatic primogeniture, or patrilineal primogeniture, the degree of kinship of males and females is determined by tracing shared descent from the nearest common ancestor through male ancestors. Those who share agnatic kinship through solely male ancestors are termed agnates. Those whose shared lineage includes a female ancestor are cognates. There were different types of succession based on agnatic primogeniture, all sharing the principle that inheritance is according to seniority of birth among siblings compared to ultimogeniture and seniority of lineage among the agnatic kin, firstly, among the sons of a monarch or head of family, with sons and their male line issue inheriting before brothers and their issue. Females and female line descendants are excluded from succession. Male preference primogeniture Male preference primogeniture accords succession to the throne to a female member of a dynasty if and only if she has no living brothers and no deceased brothers who left surviving legitimate descendants. A dynast's sons and their lines of descent all come before that dynast's daughters and their lines. Older sons and their lines come before younger sons and their lines. Older daughters and their lines come before younger daughters and their lines. It was practiced in the succession to the once separate thrones of England and Scotland until their union under James VI and I and then the United Kingdom until 2015, when the succession to the Crown Act 2013 changed it to absolute primogeniture. The rule change also applies to all Commonwealth realms that have the British monarch as their head of state. Male preference primogeniture is currently practiced in succession to the thrones of Monaco and Spain before 1700 and since 1830. With respect to hereditary titles, it is usually the rule for Scotland and baronies by writ in the United Kingdom, but baronies by writ go into abeyance when the last male title holder dies leaving more than one surviving sister or more than one descendant in the legitimate female line of the original title holder. <laughs> Salic law An agnatic seniority primogeniture system that excludes any female from inheritance of a monarch's principal possessions is generally known in Western Europe as an application of the Salic Law. See Terra Salitza. This rule of succession developed in the course of a series of successions in France in the later Middle Ages. In 1316, Joan, the only surviving child of Louis X of France, was debarred from the throne in favor of her uncle, Philip, Count of Poitiers. After this it was declared that women could not inherit the French throne. Then in 1328, after the death of Charles IV, Philip, Count of Valois Charles IV's paternal cousin became king, notwithstanding the claims of Edward III of England. By proximity of blood, Edward was the closest relative to the dead king, as he was the son of the king's sister Isabella. The assemblies of the French barons and prelates and the University of Paris resolved that males who derive their right to inheritance through their mother should be excluded. This ruling became a key point of contention in the subsequent Hundred Years' War. 
Over the following century, French jurists adopted a clause from the 6th century Pactus Legis Salici, which asserted that no female or her descendants could inherit the throne, as a governing rule for the French succession. In the lands of Napoleon Bonaparte's conquests, Salic law was adopted, including the French Empire, the Kingdom of Westphalia, the Kingdom of Holland and, under Napoleonic influence, the House of Bernadotte Sweden. Other states adopted Salic primogeniture as well, including Belgium, Denmark in 1853, and all of the Eastern European monarchies except Greece, i.e. Albania, Bulgaria, Montenegro, Romania, and Serbia. During this era, Spain in the Carlist conflicts fought a civil war which pitted the Salic and female line heirs of the ruling dynasty against one another for possession of the crown. A variation of Salic primogeniture allowed the sons of women to inherit, but not women themselves, an example being the Francoist succession to the throne of Spain that was applied in 1947 to 1978. Most British and French titles of nobility descend to the senior male by primogeniture, to the exclusion of females, and agnatic cadets may bear courtesy or subsidiary titles. Notable exceptions in England include the Duchy of Lancaster, which is merged with the British Crown which has included women in inheritance since the 16th century, and the Dukedom of Marlborough, which has included women in inheritance since its establishment in 1702. Topic. Preference for males The preference for males existing in most systems of primogeniture and in other mechanisms of hereditary succession comes mostly from the perceived nature of the tasks and role of the monarch. A monarch most usually was, first and foremost, a military protector. An alternative theory posits that the preference for males arose out of a desire to maximize reproductive success. It was thought that because of a sexual double standard, in which males were able to produce illegitimate children as well as legitimate children, a son would ultimately increase one's posterity more than a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Arguments in favor Primogeniture prevents the subdivision of estates and diminishes internal pressures to sell property for example, if two children inherit a house and neither can afford to buy out the other's share. In Western Europe, most younger sons of the nobility had no prospect of inheriting property, and were obliged to seek careers in the church, in military service, or in government. Wills often included bequests to a monastic order who would take the disinherited son. Many of the Spanish conquistadors were younger sons who had to make their fortune in war. In the late 17th and early 18th centuries, many younger sons of English aristocrats specifically chose to leave England for Virginia in the colonies. Many of the early Virginians who were plantation owners were such younger sons who had left England fortuneless due to primogeniture laws. These founding fathers of the United States of America were nearly universally descended from the landed gentry of England. In Japan, the imperial chronologies include eight reigning empresses from ancient times up through the Edo period, however, their successors were most often selected from amongst the males of the paternal imperial bloodline, which is why some conservative scholars argue that the women's reigns were temporary and that male-only succession tradition must be maintained. Japanese empresses such as Empress Gensho 680 to 748, who succeeded her mother the Empress Geme 661 to 721 on the throne but only because she was a princess of the imperial family, daughter of Prince Kusakabe, remain the sole exceptions to this conventional argument. <laughs> <laughs> Arguments against The fact that the eldest son scooped the pool often led to ill feeling amongst younger sons and of course daughters. Through marriage, estates inherited by primogeniture were combined and some nobles achieved wealth and power sufficient to pose a threat even to the crown itself. Finally, nobles tended to complain about and resist rules of primogeniture. In Democracy in America, Alexis de Tocqueville argues that the abolition of the laws of primogeniture and entail in the law of inheritance of private property as opposed to inheritance of a monarchy result in the more rapid division of land, forcing landless people to seek wealth outside the family estate in order to maintain their previous standard of living, accelerating the death of the landed aristocracy and also quickening the shift to democracy. Historical examples A 
A case of agnatic primogeniture is exemplified in the French royal milieu, where the Salic law attributed to the Salian Franks forbade any inheritance of a crown through the female line. This rule was adopted to solve the dispute over the legitimate successor of Charles IV of France, Edward III of England, or Philip VI of France, though the former would have a stronger claim should proximity of blood be considered. Conflict between the Salic law and the male preferred system was also the genesis of Carlism in Spain. The 1837 divergence of the crowns of Hanover and Great Britain upon the death of William IV of the United Kingdom resulted in the succession of his eldest surviving brother Ernest I to Hanover, while the United Kingdom was inherited by his niece, Queen Victoria, was due to the operation of semi Salic law in Hanover and to male preference primogeniture in the British Empire. In 1890, the divergence of the thrones of Luxembourg and the Netherlands, both ruled by semi salic law, was caused by the fact that the Luxembourg line of succession went back more generations than the Dutch one. The Luxembourg succession was ruled by the provisions of the Nassau House Treaty of 1783. Where the succession is concerned, Luxembourg is the successor state to the Principality of Orange Nassau Dietz. The Dutch succession only went back to King William I Therefore, Luxembourg still had agnatic heirs from another branch of the House of Nassau left to succeed, while in the Netherlands the male line starting with William I was depleted. Since the Middle Ages, the semi salic principle was prevalent for the inheritance of feudal land in the Holy Roman Empire. Inheritance was allowed through females when the male line expired. Females themselves did not inherit, but their male issue could. For example, a grandfather without sons was succeeded by his grandson, the son of his daughter, although the daughter still lived. Likewise, an uncle without sons of his own was succeeded by his nephew, a son of his sister, even if the sister still lived. Common in feudal Europe outside of Germany was land inheritance based on a form of primogeniture. A lord was succeeded by his eldest son but, failing sons, either by daughters or sons of daughters. In most medieval Western European feudal fiefs, females such as daughters and sisters were allowed to succeed, brothers failing. But usually the husband of the heiress became the real lord, assuming his wife's title with the suffix jury uxorus. In more complex medieval cases, the sometimes conflicting principles of proximity of blood and primogeniture competed, and outcomes were at times unpredictable. Proximity meant that an heir closer in degree of kinship to the lord in question was given precedence although that heir was not necessarily the heir by primogeniture. The Burgundian succession in 1361 was resolved in favor of John, son of a younger daughter, on basis of blood proximity, being a nearer cousin of the dead duke than Charles, grandson of the elder daughter. Proximity sometimes favored younger lines directly contrary to the outcome from applying primogeniture, since it was more probable that from a younger line, a member of an earlier generation was still alive compared with the descendants of the elder line. In dispute over the Scottish succession, 1290–91, the Bruce family pleaded tanistry and proximity of blood, whereas Balliol argued his claim based on primogeniture. The arbiter, Edward I of England, decided in favor of primogeniture. But later, the independence wars reverted the situation in favor of the Bruce, due to political exigency. The earldom of Gloucester in the beginning of 14th century went to full sisters of the dead earl, not to his half-sisters, though they were elder, having been born of the father's first marriage, while the earl himself was from second marriage. Full siblings were considered higher in proximity than half-siblings, however, primogeniture increasingly won legal cases over proximity in later centuries. Later, when lands were strictly divided among noble families and tended to remain fixed, agnatic primogeniture became usual, succession going to the eldest son of the monarch. If the monarch had no sons, the throne would pass to the nearest male relative in the male line. Some countries however accepted female rulers early on, so that if the monarch had no sons, the throne would pass to the eldest daughter. For example, Queen Christina of Sweden succeeded to the throne after the death of her father, King Gustav II Adolf. In England, primogeniture was mandatory for inheritance of land. Until the Statute of Wills was passed in 1540, a will could control only the inheritance of personal property. Real estate land passed to the eldest male descendant by operation of law. The statute added a provision that a landowner could «devise» land by the use of a new device called a «testament». The rule of primogeniture in England was not changed until the Administration of Estates Act in 1925. 
In law, the rule of inheritance whereby land descends to the oldest son. Under the feudal system of medieval Europe, primogeniture generally governed the inheritance of land held in military tenure The effect of this rule was to keep the father's land for the support of the son who rendered the required military service. When feudalism declined and the payment of a tax was substituted for military service, the need for primogeniture disappeared. In England, consequently, there was enacted the Statute of Wills 1540, which permitted the oldest son to be entirely cut off from inheriting, and in the 17th century military tenure was abolished. Primogeniture is, nevertheless, still customary in England. In the United States primogeniture never became widely established. Semi-Salic law Another variation on agnatic primogeniture is the so-called semi-Salic law, or agnatic-cognatic primogeniture, which allows women to succeed only at the extinction of all the male descendants in the male line. Such were the cases of Bourbon Spain until 1833 and the dominions of Austria-Hungary, as well as most realms within the former Holy Roman Empire, i.e. most German monarchies. This was also the law of Russia under the Pauline Laws of 1797 and of Luxembourg until equal primogeniture was introduced on 20 June 2011. There are various versions of semi-Salic law also, although in all forms women do not succeed by application of the same kind of primogeniture as was in effect among males in the family. Rather, the female who is nearest in kinship to the last male monarch of the family inherits, even if another female agnate of the dynasty is senior by primogeniture. Among sisters and the lines of descendants issuing from them, the elder are preferred to the younger. In reckoning consanguinity or proximity of blood the dynasty's house law defines who among female relatives is nearest to the last male. Uterine primogeniture Under uterine primogeniture, succession to the throne or other property is passed to the male most closely related to the previous titleholder through female kinship. A male may also inherit a right of succession through a female ancestor or spouse, to the exclusion of any female relative who might be older or of nearer proximity of blood see above for Spain's mid-20th century dynastic succession law. In such cases, inheritance depends on uterine kinship, so a king would typically be succeeded by his sister's son. This particular system of inheritance applied to the thrones of the Picts of Northern Britain and the Etruscans of Italy. Some kingdoms and ethnic groups in Africa follow the same practice. This usage may stem in part from the certainty of the relationship to the previous king and kings, sons and daughters of a sister are his relations made a semper certa est, even if they do not have the same father. Topic. Matrilineal primogeniture Matrilineal primogeniture, or female preference uterine primogeniture, is a form of succession practiced in some societies in which the eldest female child inherits the throne, to the total exclusion of males. The order of succession to the position of the reign queen is an example in an African culture of matrilineal primogeniture. Not only is dynastic descent reckoned through the female line, but only females are eligible to inherit. History In Christian Europe, the Catholic Church originally had a monopoly on the authority to sanction marriage. It forbade polygamy and taught that divorce was an impossibility per se, as it still does. Consequently, in Europe, it was very difficult to ensure succession solely by direct male descendants or even direct male or female progeny. In Islamic and Asian cultures, religious officials and customs either sanctioned polygyny, use of consorts, or both, or they had no authority of marriage. Monarchs could consequently ensure sufficient numbers of male offspring to assure succession. In such cultures, female heads of state were rare. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Biblical The earliest account of primogeniture to be known widely in modern times is that of Isaac's sons Esau, who was born first, and Jacob, who was born second. Esau was entitled to the birthright, Bekorah, but he sold the right to Jacob for a mess of pottage, i.e., a small amount of food. 
Although the veracity of this account is not corroborated by other sources, its widespread acceptance demonstrates that primogeniture was sufficiently common in the Middle East for the account to seem plausible to the people living there prior to the Roman Empire. In the Bible a woman's right and obligation to inherit property in the absence of a male heir in the family was established by the daughters of Zelophehad in Numbers 27. Roman law During the Roman Empire, Roman law governed much of Europe, and the laws pertaining to inheritance made no distinction between the oldest or youngest, male or female, if the decedent died intestate. Although admission to the two highest ordines orders, I, e., the senators and equestrians, potentially brought lifelong privileges that the next generation could inherit, the principle of inherited rank in general was little used. Rather, Roman aristocracy was based on competition, and a Roman family could not maintain its position in the Ordines merely by hereditary succession or title to land. Although the eldest son typically carried his father's name in some form, he was expected to construct his own career based on competence as an administrator or general and on remaining in favor with the emperor and his council at court. Other than meeting requirements for personal wealth, the qualifications for belonging to the senatorial or equestrian orders varied from generation to generation, and in the later empire, the dignitas esteem that attended on senatorial or equestrian rank was refined further with additional titles, such as ver illustres, that were not inherited. Most Roman emperors indicated their choice of successor, usually a close family member or adopted heir, and the presumption that the eldest or even a natural son would inherit was not enshrined. The death of an emperor led to a critical period of uncertainty and crisis. In theory, the Senate was entitled to choose the new emperor, but did so mindful of acclamation by the army or the Praetorian Guard. Thus, neither an emperor nor his heir had an inherent right to rule, and did so through military power and the Senate's symbolic consent. <laughs> Reemergence in medieval and modern times The law of primogeniture in Europe has its origins in medieval Europe, which due to the feudal system necessitated that the estates of land-owning feudal lords be kept as large and united as possible to maintain social stability as well as the wealth, power and social standing of their families. Adam Smith, in his book An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, explains the origin of primogeniture in Europe in the following way. W. Hen land was considered as the means, not of subsistence merely, but of power and protection, it was thought better that it should descend undivided to one. In those disorderly times, every great landlord was a sort of petty prince. His tenants were his subjects. He was their judge, and in some respects their legislator in peace and their leader in war. He made war according to his own discretion, frequently against his neighbors, and sometimes against his sovereign. The security of a landed estate, therefore, the protection which its owner could afford to those who dwelt on it, depended upon its greatness. To divide it was to ruin it, and to expose every part of it to be oppressed and swallowed up by the incursions of its neighbors. The law of primogeniture, therefore, came to take place, not immediately indeed, but in process of time, in the succession of landed estates, for the same reason that it has generally taken place in that of monarchies, though not always at their first institution. Historical examples A case of agnatic primogeniture is exemplified in the French royal milieu, where the Salic law attributed to the Salian Franks forbade any inheritance of a crown through the female line. This rule was adopted to solve the dispute over the legitimate successor of John I of France, the short-lived son of deceased Louis X of France in favor of Philip V of France, brother of Louis and uncle of John, over Joan II of Navarre, daughter of Louis and sister of John, the Estates General of 1317 ruling that women do not succeed the kingdom of France. In 1328, it was further elaborated with the statement that women cannot transmit a right which they do not possess. To solve the dispute over the legitimate successor of Philip V's brother Charles IV of France Edward III of England or Philip VI of France, though the former would have a stronger claim should proximity of blood be considered, which had never been the case in France since 987, instead as well of both agnatic cognatic primogeniture or male preference cognatic primogeniture and the resulting heirs. This dispute was among the factors behind the Hundred Years' War, which broke out in 1337. 
Conflict between the Salic law and the male preferred system was also the genesis of Carlism in Spain and Miguelism in Portugal. The crowns of Hanover and Great Britain, which had been in personal union since 1714, were separated in 1837 upon the death of King William IV. His niece Victoria inherited the British crown under male preference primogeniture but, because of semi Salic law, was not the heir to that of Hanover, which passed to William's eldest surviving brother, Ernest Augustus, King of Hanover. The divergence in the late 19th century of the thrones of Luxembourg and the Netherlands, both subject to semi salic law, resulted from the fact that the Luxembourg line of succession went back more generations than did the Dutch line. The Luxembourg succession was set by the Nassau House Treaty of 1783, which declared each prince of the House of Nassau to be a potential heir to the territories of every branch of the dynasty. Insofar as the succession is concerned, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is the successor state to the Principality of Orange Nassau Dietz, which was given in exchange to William VI of Nassau, Prince of Orange in 1813. Succession to the New Kingdom of the Netherlands was recognized by the Congress of Vienna in 1815 as belonging exclusively to the descendants of Prince William VI, who became King William I of the Netherlands. In 1890, William I's agnatic line of male descendants died out, leaving the Netherlands to his female descendant Queen Wilhelmina, whereas Luxembourg still had an agnatic heir from a distant branch of the dynasty left to succeed, ex-Duke Adolf of Nassau, who became reigning Grand Duke, thus ending the personal union of the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Since the Middle Ages, the semi salic principle was prevalent for the inheritance of feudal land in the Holy Roman Empire. Inheritance was allowed through females when the male line expired. Females themselves did not inherit, but their male issue could. For example, a grandfather without sons was succeeded by his grandson, the son of his daughter, although the daughter still lived. Likewise, an uncle without sons of his own was succeeded by his nephew, a son of his sister, even if the sister still lived. Common in feudal Europe outside of Germany was land inheritance based on a form of primogeniture. A lord was succeeded by his eldest son but, failing sons, either by daughters or sons of daughters. In most medieval Western European feudal fiefs, females such as daughters and sisters were allowed to succeed, brothers failing. But usually the husband of the heiress became the real lord, assuming his wife's title In more complex medieval cases, the sometimes conflicting principles of proximity of blood and primogeniture competed, and outcomes were at times unpredictable. Proximity meant that an heir closer in degree of kinship to the lord in question was given precedence although that heir was not necessarily the heir by primogeniture. The Burgundian succession in 1361 was resolved in favor of King John II, son of a younger daughter, on basis of blood proximity, being a nearer cousin of the dead duke than Charles II of Navarre, grandson of the elder daughter and son of Jean. John was only one generation of consanguinity removed from the late duke instead of two for Charles. In dispute over the Scottish succession, 1290–92, the Bruce family pleaded tanistry and proximity of blood, whereas Balliol argued his claim based on primogeniture. The arbiter, Edward I of England, decided in favour of primogeniture. But later, the independence wars reverted the situation in favour of the Bruce, due to political exigency. The earldom of Gloucester in the beginning of 14th century went to full sisters of the dead earl, not to his half-sisters, though they were elder, having been born of the father's first marriage, while the earl himself was from second marriage. Full siblings were considered higher in proximity than half-siblings, however, primogeniture increasingly won legal cases over proximity in later centuries. Later, when lands were strictly divided among noble families and tended to remain fixed, agnatic primogeniture practically the same as Salic law became usual, succession going to the eldest son of the monarch. If the monarch had no sons, the throne would pass to the nearest male relative in the male line. Some countries, however, accepted female rulers early on, so that if the monarch had no sons, the throne would pass to the eldest daughter. For example, in 1632 Christina, Queen of Sweden succeeded to the throne after the death of her father, King Gustav II Adolf. In England, primogeniture was mandatory for inheritance of land. Until the Statute of Wills was passed in 1540, a will could control only the inheritance of personal property. Real estate land passed to the eldest male descendant by operation of law. The statute added a provision that a landowner could devise land by the use of a new device called a testament. The rule of primogeniture in England was not changed until the Administration of Estates Act in 1925. 
In law, primogeniture is the rule of inheritance whereby land descends to the oldest son. Under the feudal system of medieval Europe, primogeniture generally governed the inheritance of land held in military tenure The effect of this rule was to keep the father's land for the support of the son who rendered the required military service. When feudalism declined and the payment of a tax was substituted for military service, the need for primogeniture disappeared. In England, consequently, there was enacted the Statute of Wills 1540, which permitted the oldest son to be entirely cut off from inheriting, and in the 17th century military tenure was abolished. Primogeniture is, nevertheless, still customary in England. Topic: <laughs> United States and Canada. In British North America, the colonies followed English primogeniture laws. Carol Shammers argues that issues of primogeniture, dower, courtesy, strict family settlements in equity, collateral kin, and unilateral division of real and personal property were fully developed in the colonial courts. The Americans differed little from English policies regarding the status of widow, widower, and lineal descendants. The primogeniture laws were repealed at the time of the American Revolution. Thomas Jefferson took the lead in repealing the law in Virginia, where nearly three-fourths of Tidewater land and perhaps a majority of western lands were entailed. Canada had the same law but repealed it in 1851, when Winston Churchill and Franklin Roosevelt met at Placentia Bay in August 1941. The latter said he couldn't understand the British aristocracy's concept of primogeniture, and he intended to divide his estate equally between his five children. Churchill explained that an equal distribution was nicknamed the Spanish Curse by the British upper classes we give everything to the eldest, and the others strive to duplicate it and found empires. While the oldest, having it all, marries for beauty which accounts, Mr. President, for my good looks. But as Churchill's father was a younger son, there may have been more modesty than mock vanity than Roosevelt realized. <inaudible> <inaudible> Noble titles <inaudible> Spain In 2006, King Juan Carlos I of Spain decreed a reform of the succession to noble titles from male preference primogeniture to absolute primogeniture. The order of succession for all noble dignities is determined in accordance with the title of concession and, if there is none, with that traditionally applied in these cases. When the order of succession to the title is not specified in the nobility title creation charter, the following rules apply. Absolute preference is given to the direct descending line over the collateral and ascending line, and, within the same line, the closest degree takes precedence over the more remote and, within the same degree, the elder over the younger, combined with the principles of firstborn and representation. Men and women have an equal right of succession to grandeeship and to titles of nobility in Spain, and no person may be given preference in the normal order of succession for reasons of gender. United Kingdom Since 2013, there has been a revived movement to reform hereditary peerage inheritance law for equal primogeniture. The Equality Titles Bill and its successive legislation have been referred to as the Downton Law, in reference to the British television drama Downton Abbey where the Earl's eldest daughter is unable to inherit the family seat because it is entailed and can be passed only to a male heir. See also Order of succession Contrasting systems of succession Proximity of blood Agnatic seniority, rota system and tanistry Elective monarchy <laughs>